Welcome to Studio Movie Recap. Ready for another quick rundown of an awesome movie? Let's dive right in, and if you enjoy, don't forget to like and subscribe for more recaps. Hundreds of years ago, people completely depleted the planet's resources, leading to a total collapse of the population. The best scientists took it upon themselves to save the dying world. A renewable energy source was found, however, the greatest danger remained humanity itself. It was then decided to improve humans as a species. On their 16th birthday, everyone undergoes a procedure that makes them physically flawless. No longer does anyone need to envy others or prove their dominance. Tally is one of those waiting for that day. For now, she is called an ugly, but she has the opportunity to see what she will look like, as she can choose her eye color or skin texture. That evening, she sneaks onto a bridge where her friend Paris is waiting for her. They watch a party in the city of the beautiful, jealous of those who are already there. Paris is three months older than Tally, and tomorrow he will undergo the operation and move to the city. Tally will have to wait her turn, and she fears that Paris will forget about her, but he assures her that she will always be his squints, and he will always be her nose. He arranges to meet her in a month. The next day, the students gather in the main hall to greet those whose time has come. Dr. Cable talks about all the advantages of being beautiful and calls forward the future beauties. Paris says goodbye to Tally, and a girl named Shay, sitting next to her, notices this. In the evening, Tally returns to her room and remembers how she and Paris met when they arrived at school. He called himself Nose, and she called herself Squints. One day, the boy hurt his hand, and the girl intentionally cut her palm. From that moment on, they shared a mark of ugliness, a scar on their palms, and the belief that they were perfect matches for each other. The next morning in class, Tally talks about the white tiger orchid, which supplies energy to the cities and decorates the fields. That evening, she undergoes the mandatory scan for her future transformation, where she chooses gold for her eye color and dreams of reuniting with Paris, from whom there has been no news. The day of the arranged meeting arrives. The girl sneaks onto the bridge, but Nose is not there. Tally decides to sneak into the city of joy. She reaches the outskirts where a party is in full swing. Suddenly, a mask falls from above, allowing its owner to change their clothing. Tally puts it on, selects a dress, and heads out to search for her friend in streets filled with lights, laughter, music, and celebration. Miraculously, she finds Paris, who barely recognizes her. Even the scar on his hand is gone, though he swore he wouldn't remove it. It turns out that after the transformation, an ugly person's life becomes entirely transformed, where an eternal friendship oath no longer matters. Tally removes the mask to remind him of herself but immediately becomes an unwanted presence. She runs, grabbing a rescue vest on her way. Realizing she is about to be caught, Tally jumps from a skyscraper. The vest saves her, and she manages to reach the bridge, but she is pursued. Just as she is about to be caught, Shay arrives to rescue her on her hoverboard. The girls immediately feel a kindred spirit. Tally shows Shay how to sneak into the locked kitchen and tells her that her meeting with Paris left her disappointed. One day, Shay suggests that Tally learn to ride the hoverboard and gives her a forbidden book to read. Tally learns that Shay told her friends about her jump with the rescue vest, and now she is the heroine of the entire campus, which could lead to her being denied the operation. But she continues with her lessons and masters the hoverboard. Later, the girls discuss beauty, and unexpectedly Shay reveals that she doesn't want to change at all. For now, she takes Tally to a training ground where, choosing the most difficult track, she puts on a master class. After riding, Tally returns the book, in which she enjoyed the free flow of everything in the world, from natural seasons to relationships. Then Shay suggests that they both refuse the operation and escape with her to the smoke, a place where people live freely. She takes her friend to the edge of the school grounds, and after leaving their tracking rings on a branch, the girls fly into the wildlands. Crossing a river, they arrive at the ruins of an old city. Shay shows her the remnants of a roller coaster, lamenting that it is destroyed. She takes her friend to a tall building, where they can call her friends from the wild world by lighting a signal fire. Shay explains that in the outside world, people work for themselves, love, and have children. There are even old people there. Everything is like in the book they read. Shay was planning to escape with her friend David when she saw Tally on the bridge and came to her rescue. She wants to read books and have hobbies because after the operation, a person no longer decides how to live. Tally doesn't understand this, as she has dreamed all her life of being beautiful. So Shay leaves her with a coded path to the smoke and departs with David, whose fire lights up on the neighboring rooftop. Tally returns to the city, where the day of her transformation soon arrives. Unexpectedly, instead of the operation, she is taken to Dr. Cable, who turns out to be well aware of her friendship with the missing Shay. She insists that David is holding Shay against her will, brainwashing her. 
Only after Tally finds Shay and returns her to the city will she be allowed to become beautiful. A distressed Tally returns to her room, where Paris visits her. He advises her to do as Dr. Cable asks, as it is the only way they can be together. Tally agrees. Dr. Cable explains that the residents of the smoke are planning to destroy the city and have developed a weapon that Tally must find and neutralize. She sets off, receiving a pendant to activate when she finds the weapon. Tally follows Shay's instructions, and after reaching the ruined roller coaster, rides it until she reaches an old railroad track. She camps in the forest for the night, lighting a fire, and unexpectedly finds charm in the surrounding nature. Later, she has to climb a steep cliff and cross the ruins on her hoverboard. The last stop is a white sea of orchids, where Tally settles in for the night. Meanwhile, Dr. Cable calls Paris and offers to further enhance him. That night, Tally wakes up surrounded by burning orchids. As she is about to lose consciousness, David finds her. He checks her over, discards a transmitter he finds, ignoring the pendant, which is not yet active, and takes her with him. However, the tracker informs Dr. Cable that Tally is in the right place. In the morning, David brings Tally to the smoke, where she reunites with Shay. However, the others find it strange that she managed to get there alone. Tally expresses her concern for Shay and believes she should return, but Shay has no intention of doing so and asks Tally to take a closer look at this way of life. The next day, Tally comes across a group of young people preparing for an expedition. It turns out that the fires are set by them because the orchids are toxic and drain nutrients from the soil, killing the planet. David offers her to join them and see the truth. The group flies on a mission aboard an ancient modified helicopter. From above, they see fields and forests destroyed by the orchids. Shay sets the plants on fire, and a blaze erupts, suddenly revealing figures of people walking through the fire unharmed. Suddenly, the helicopter shakes, and Shay falls down. Tally immediately jumps after her. She finds her friend and grabs her, just as she sees a figure in a blue suit running towards them, but Tally grabs onto a rope thrown down from the helicopter, and the two girls are pulled out of danger. Later, they discuss what happened, confused about how the city scouts found them. Tally feels guilty and torn. After getting to know the inhabitants of the smoke better, she has started to think differently. Here, everyone works but doesn't use money, they just trade. The elderly aren't a burden because they contribute in their own way. Most importantly, the people have chosen to be here. They melt down old iron and make useful things. When Tally asks about weapons, Shea simply shrugs, saying, why would we need them? Tally joins in the work, and even though it's hard, she enjoys the process. In the evening, everyone gathers around the campfires, where she is treated to natural foods. David tells the people that scouts have been spotted, meaning the city hasn't stopped pursuing them. While the smoke believes in controlling nature, the city has perfected controlling people. By focusing on appearance, people stop reading, learning, dreaming, and choosing who they want to become. That's why they are ready to defend their freedom. The next day, David teaches Tally how to shoot a bow, noticing the calluses on her hands, and gives her his gloves as a gift. At that moment, the flamethrowers arrive, having encountered scouts again. However, these are not typical beauties but very fast and strong guys. Later, Shay notices the gloves and explains that in this world, things are different from the city. If a guy cares for a girl, it means she's important to him, so Tally has to make a choice. One day, Tally asks David about the weapons. He takes her to his parents. They reveal that they used to be plastic surgeons. It turns out these operations are not as safe as people believe. There were even fatalities. While studying these cases, David's father noticed changes in the brain of the beautiful, realizing that after the procedures, people's thinking became clouded, and they experienced a false sense of happiness. But only Cable realized the secret was uncovered, and they were removed from their work, and their research results were confiscated. It became clear that the brain was being intentionally damaged to control people. David's parents were lucky to find themselves in a community of dissenters, where they were given a medicine that helped them stay sane. That's why they fled and dedicated the rest of their lives to creating a cure. But one of the main components remained in the city. The serum is the weapon, though it's not yet completed. Once they obtain what's missing, they will need to test it on a person, but only if that person agrees. That night, Tally reflects on everything she's learned, takes off the pendant, and throws it into the fire, not realizing that by doing so, she activates it. She tells David what happened, but he reassures her that she has chosen the right path. He tells her she is beautiful and kisses her. The next morning, the city attacks the smoke. Men in blue suits trap the residents of the smoke in nets and gather them in the square. Tally holds back David, and they watch the events unfold from a distance. Cable interrogates David's parents, and when she gets no answers, she orders Paris to kill David's father. He reaches out and, with one swift movement, snaps the man's neck. 
David rushes out, and together with his mother, they cry over his father's body. Paris sees Tally but doesn't touch her, while Cable thanks her for her cooperation, revealing her true mission. Shay expresses her disgust towards her. David's mother secretly slips a vial of the medicine into her son's pocket. Tally breaks free, runs to David's house, and sets it on fire. In the chaos, David escapes into the forest. Tally, shooting her pursuer with a bow, also runs while the townspeople burn down the settlement and take its residents away. Later, Tally finds David and tells him that she didn't know the whole truth, and the residents of the smoke paid the price. She is ready to help him get to the city and fix her mistake. She takes him to the school, introduces him to Shay's friends, and asks them for help. The young people start a rebellion, writing the words, smoke forever, above the city, diverting attention from the main goal. Taking advantage of this, Tally and David sneak into the laboratory. But to access the right level, the school ring is not enough. David takes it from a guard, and the pair find and free the residents of the smoke. But Shay has already been taken for the operation. Tally, David, and his mother rush after her, but it's too late. Shay has been turned into a beauty, and she really likes it. At that moment, Paris and Dr. Cable enter the laboratory, urging people to finally make a choice. All three step into the transformation booths, but just as the process begins, a helicopter flies overhead, and David's friend uses a flamethrower to melt the outer glass. The system collapses. Tally pulls Shay out, and while David's mother finds the necessary component for the medicine, they escape. The group makes it to the roof, where they are stopped by Paris. Tally tries to remind him of their friendship, but he reaches out, and David, remembering his father's death, attacks the handsome man. After a struggle, Paris dangles over a waterway, and at the last moment, he recognizes Tally, but he slips and falls down. David leads Tally away. Later, the group gathers in the ruins of the ancient city. David's mother shows them the retrieved component and pulls the vial from her son's pocket. The medicine is finally ready, but Shay refuses to be the test subject, as she loves being beautiful. So Tally volunteers to return to the city, undergo the procedure, and then become a volunteer. It's very risky, but she is confident in her strength. Sometime later, the beautiful Tally admires the city, and when asked by the system, assures it that she is completely happy being perfect. The movie- Did you enjoy the recap? Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to be updated next time we drop. Thanks for watching.